Do you wake up feeling lethargic and not wanting to get out of bed? It's so much easier to hit snooze, close your eyes and fall back to sleep. So did I. I needed to find a way to get my day going, and that's when I found... Andrew Huberman, a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine. So I decided to take on his science-backed morning routine for one week. Let's jump straight into it. For me, I tend to wake up sometime around 6 a.m., 6.30, sometimes as late as 7 a.m., and I write down the time in which I woke up. The second thing I do after I wake up is to get into forward ambulation. Day one, morning one. I didn't sleep that well, so I'm a bit tired now because I'd normally be asleep for another couple of hours. But after a bit, I've actually woken up. I don't feel that bad. I kind of feel energized. Don't know if it's the sun, the music, walking, but I'll take it. And the third protocol is woven in with that walk, which is to get that sunlight exposure. It's quite difficult to actually get sunlight because the sun is quite low. There's a lot of shade like this. So I've had to go to that open space to be able to actually be fully in sunlight for most of it. So far, it's not that bad. Just get up, go straight outside for a walk, and you've already completed three of Huberman's protocols. Let's see what the fourth protocol is. I drink at least 16 and most days 32 ounces of water. I also put a little bit of sea salt in the water. Now this is one thing that I really wasn't looking forward to doing. Just drinking salty water. I'm not really sure what it does, but luckily it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. But I still wouldn't recommend it. So that's the water intake done. Now, what about coffee? I purposely delay my caffeine intake to 90 minutes to 120 minutes after I wake up. This is something I saw many people struggling to follow online, but coffee isn't really a morning crutch for me. I just like it for the flavour rather than fiending for the caffeine. But, you know, once you've got a coffee, what time is it? We're now at the description of my day and these protocols in which I would do a 90 minute bout of work. After I finish that cognitive work bout, I do some form of physical exercise for about an hour. Oh, a human, you're trying to kill me. I'm actually almost died up. Doing this on no food is not it. I had to cut it short because I feel awful. I feel covered in like a layer of liquid. I feel like I might pass out or throw up. <laughs> I don't know if it's a mixture of uh, just overheating or... I, surely it's the fact I've not eaten. Because <sighs> that is hitting me hard. Like normally I have a big breakfast and... I don't know if I can do this for a week. I don't know if I'm even going to survive today. <laughs> Part of me is like, at this point you could do anything to me because I'm so dead I'm not going to be able to stop it. But part of me is just like, let me relax and do nothing now because I feel on the edge. I don't eat anything until about 11 a.m. or 12 noon. Finally, by this point I feel like my stomach's eating itself. And last, but certainly not least, deliberate cold exposure. I really don't want to get this. Andrew, I hate you. He's trying to kill me right now. But I guess we just got to go for it. survived the week following Huberman's protocols and I learned quite a lot about the mornings. Some things I am very glad to be done with but other things I liked and I'll continue. First things first being forward ambulation and the morning sunlight. Getting up, going out for a walk, 45 minutes to an hour long, just gets my day going, gets me moving and it means that I haven't really got an excuse just to sit around and not get started. But after getting back from that walk, I am going straight to food. I, I am not leaving my breakfast until 11 or 12 because I am far too hungry. After breakfast and my morning walk, it's probably been 90 minutes to 120 minutes since I woke up anyway, allowing my cortisol levels to drop a bit before I have this morning coffee. 
and then with this coffee I'll start my morning work but I will stick at it longer than the 90 minutes Huberman recommends due to your old trading system. I find I can continue working longer than this and stay focused which lets me get more done in the morning. However, working longer means I lose the time set aside for a workout, but some days I will do a workout before lunch. However, most times my workout comes in the form of football, which is done in the evenings, so I don't feel the pressure to get a workout done in the morning. Now, the salt water protocol. Not something I'm going to be continuing with because I don't really see the benefit and it's just not pleasant. And something else I'm not going to continue with cold exposure. I understand the benefits of this one, but I've not got the discipline to keep at it. For now, anyway. <laughs>